Good evening, everybody. I'm Bishop Randy Dean, and I am honored that you chose to join us here today for Sunday Night Sanctuary. I'm in a little bit of a different setting. This is my man cave, my favorite uh, place in the world behind me are my books, my treasures. But um, I'm not here to talk about that, and I'm not here to focus on the, uh, the uh, setting of what I'm in the middle of. I'm here to talk to you about something that is been profoundly near and dear to my heart. And you can see from the title, it, it, this is about post-evangelical Christianity in a time of deep political divisiveness, in a time where the divisions of our nation are excruciatingly painful. It's, it's time not for the church to call our nation to repent. It's time for the church to repent. If my people who are called by my name will turn from their wicked ways. Well, who are those people? That's in the, the Old Testament in Chronicles. Who are my people? Well, my people, that would be the church. And so it's the my people, not the nation. It's the my people part of that that has to turn from their wicked ways and call out to heaven. I believe we're, we're um, and we have been in some for some time now in a period of what I have called post-evangelical Christianity. So I'll get to that in just a couple of moments, so bear with me. I want to set the stage for what Sunday Night Sanctuary uh, is always about. We always start with the Lord's Prayer, which we will do in a moment, and we always end this half an hour of time together uh, concluding with communion. So if you'll have a wafer ready and some juice or wine, whatever is your uh, your choice of eating and drinking for communion at the end. Why don't you have that ready right now and um, we'll, we'll receive together. I believe communion is that table, that place that can bring extraordinary healing to the divided nature of our lives. And I will aim us toward taking communion together today so that we can experience a healing that is from heaven, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, is the passion of Jesus that he expresses in a prayer that he offers us to pray so that we can join with millions of believers who've gone before us, praying for a kingdom that unites us, not in a nation, not in national uh, identity, but in an identity with one kingdom, and that kingdom is the kingdom of God. So that's why we start Sunday night sanctuary with the Lord's Prayer. I pray with my eyes open. It's become my new my new habit. I urge others to give it a try. I, I've had people tell me for the last few years how it, uh, it it kind of haunts them when they pray now because they they can't they can't close their eyes anymore without thinking. Well, open your eyes now. And and I'm I'm not I'm not preaching a hard line about open your eyes, close your eyes. I'm suggesting that since Jesus opened his eyes two times at least in the Gospels, he, he lifted his eyes to heaven and he prayed. It, it seems to me that we ought to afford ourselves the, the moments of prayer with our eyes open, if for no other reason but to shake up the venue of our hearts and our, our thinking when we pray so that we're not steeped in vain repetition which often happens with the Lord's Prayer. So if we can come to the Lord's Prayer and shake it up a little bit, maybe, just maybe, we'll take ourselves into a, a deeper and more profound revelation, understanding and, and contemplation of what it is we're praying. So that's why I'll pray with my eyes open. I like to lift my hands and open them up to heaven, first dropping anything of cares and weights that I'm bearing and then opening my hands that heaven has a has a landing place, a, a, a landing pad, if you will. So join me in the Lord's Prayer, would you please? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I often feel just a tiny bit of weight in my hands when I pray the Lord's Prayer, and I am right now. It's like I've got 
uh, a five pound bag of sugar in both hands that the weight of heaven seems to just land there. And then I want to press that to my heart because in today's um, Sunday night sanctuary, I want to, I want to unload from my heart some beauties and some healing and some life and love and some goodness at a t for a, such a time as this. Well, I'm recording this and I'm coming at this at a time of, of uh, just following the national election here in the United States of America. The vitriol and the pain of the past several months, if not years, of our politics in this nation have been overbearing. The, uh, if I could just stay within the season in terms of the election, the, the, the commercials, the, uh, the ads, the, the billboards, the radio, the internet, you name it, on every level, the vitriol, the poison that has been siphoned out into our nation has been deadly. It's been painful. It, 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 to assassinate other people's character in order for me to uh, ascend to some seat of power seems so completely opposite to the character of Jesus. To the character of Jesus, who ascended to power by first walking the earth for three years and the signs, wonders, miracles, preaching the gospel to who? The good news to the poor. And then ending his time on earth by washing the feet of his own disciples, his followers. He became a, a pure, visible, tangible servant right there in that moment, washed their feet, served them communion, and was this, this towering example of extraordinary humility. He ascended to power, not through character assassination, but by himself being assassinated. And by the way, it wasn't God assassinating his own son. It was humankind. It was all of the political powers of his day. It was all the, the political machinations of the church of his day, which wasn't a church, but you understand what I'm saying. It was the, uh, the church incorporated, the religion incorporated of his time in cahoots, in combination with Rome's empirical power that assassinated Jesus. He assassinated no character in order to ascend to the right hand of the Father. And in fact, he refused to fight Herod, who was a puppet king. He refused to argue with, with Pilate, who was, a, was a, the, the, the uh, Roman re representative to uh, uh, Israel and Jerusalem at the time. Jesus refused to lower himself into that political arena because he knew then what we need to know now is that arena is destructive to character and to the soul of human beings. As I've watched over the past, not just this season, but over the past many years, it has been evident to me that, in particular, the Evangelical Church of America has, jo has chosen to join itself with political powers. That is a deadly combination. It is a failed enterprise to bring about God's kingdom purposes. Only humble love will bring about God's purposes. Only meekness will bring us to the place of inheriting the earth. It's only our, our willingness to lay down any worldly uh, tools that we are so tempted to grab in order to ascend to some kind of powerful position. The evangelical church is not everybody in it, but as a collective and as a, a corporate group have made the tragic mistake of dragging politics into our pulpits, into our buildings. And that's why I've taken on a task of offering Sunday Night Sanctuary as a sanctuary away from that. And, and, and why my wife, Ginger, and I, who, as you'll see in the comments below, she and I are monitoring this tonight, we, we've decided to go after the spiritual refugees, uh, precious people who have fled the organized brick-and-mortar uh, relationship, especially with evangelical Christianity, because of the political meanness and, and hurt and pain that is there, especially if they disagree with their, their political views. And so 
I, I am convinced that this is going to serve us well. Uh, you know, Joseph said to his brothers, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. I, I think the evil has been done to us, and now God's going to mean it for good because I do believe that we're on a, in a time for post-evangelical Christianity. See, Christianity was never supposed to be evangelical Christianity, uh, and there's more to it than just that. But what, what, if, what if we should be a prophetic Christianity where we, as a, as a collective body of Christ, we can speak truth to power Truth in love, truth with passionate love, but we're not married to power. We're not holding allegiance to power, but we can tr speak truth to power because we're prophetic Christianity or apostolic Christianity or, you know, the, the whole term of evangelical is a, is a modern uh, invention. And after all, shouldn't we simply be the passionate followers of Christ who owe no allegiance to any empire except one kingdom, one kingdom, one kingdom, the kingdom of God. And we owe no allegiance to anyone else, that all others must submit, all others, especially in our loyalties, all others submit to the kingdom of God. If, 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 it, it is, if it's contrary to the values of Jesus, then it's contrary to to the values of my heart. And there are so many things that evangelical Christianity and politics um, have participated in that have been in, in contradiction to the values of Jesus. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are the poor. Um, I could go on. But I want to read from James quickly here. Um, James, it's, 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 <laughs> the book of James is powerful when he says, uh, this is pure and undefiled religion in the sight of our God and Father. This is pure and undefiled religion in the sight of God and our Father, to visit the orphans and the widows in their distress, and to keep oneself unstained by the world. Let, let me break that down a little bit. To visit, the word visit there means to set a guard. It's not just go knock on the door, hi, I'm, I'm, I'm Randy, I want to visit you and, and prove that I have pure religion. No, that's not visiting. To guard, to guard the orphan. To word, the word visit implies that I've, I've positioned myself uh, at the doorstep of your life to watch out for you. If you're orphaned by poverty, by political powers, if you've been orphaned by immigration policies that are wretched and horrible, and, and I don't care who you blame for that. I mean, I know everybody's got a point to blame, and blame is a whole nother contrary value to the values of Jesus. Uh, Blame feeds our ego because then we sound so smart because we found somebody to point a finger at. This is not about blame. It's about owning pure religion. Pure religion guards the orphan. Pure religion guards and sets a visiting heart upon the widows, the elderly, those that are, those that are terribly vulnerable. You know, we've discovered in this past year that the elderly of America are, are at high risk in this pandemic. So rather than arguing the politics of this pandemic, our hearts need to be captivated with how do I visit the, the widow? How do I visit the elderly? How do I guard those that are less powerful than me? And I'll, I'll tell you, I've spent the better part of the last two years seeing firsthand the, the plight of, of the, the elderly, vulnerable, poor of, of my own region. I, I see... Uh, anywhere of two to five to seven hundred elderly that are that are vulnerable in in our region, and I, I see firsthand. I I was just somewhere a couple of days ago with with a curbside uh, distribution of food, and I, I I was in charge of that, so I was having to to take names and check off who was there to get their box of food, and 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 the the raw and ragged real poverty that you see with your eyes in a time like that reminds me that all of our political fights hold no value for the kingdom Jesus came to build. All of our political fights die when we pay attention to the orphan and the widow, when we see and recognize it's time to guard vulnerable people. That's pure religion. That's not religion incorporated, pure religion 
that which inspires the better angels of our heart to see to it that the, the meek and the poor are cared for. You know, James goes on right after he says, uh, well, by the way, he said, keep yourself unstained by the world. That, that doesn't mean uh, don't go to movies and, and, and don't drink and, and, and don't chew tobacco or, 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 or go with girls that do. That used to be my old uh, Pentecostal heritage. That's bleeding out in my words. But to be unstained by the world means that the, the systems of worldly power are not staining me that I've, I've refused to be stained by a, seeking to ascend to power by virtue of political influence. If that was the case, then Jesus would have taken the devil up in the temptation when he said, just, you know, just worship me and I'll give you all these kingdoms, they're mine. And Jesus <laughs> recognized immediately that that, that hybrid that hybrid combination of worshiping the devil in order to gain these kingdoms was deadly and wrong. And Jesus simply turned him aside and said, get behind me, be done. I'm done with you because this is not, I will worship my God and him alone will I serve. I will not serve the stain of worldly temptation to gain power and influence through laws and legislation and legislatures and seats of power. They don't tempt me. So get out of my sight. This is why I'm saying we're, we're entering a post-evangelical Christianity where we recognize that the evangelical uh, failure, and that again, that doesn't mean everybody in an evangelical church. It just means as a system, that failure to recognize what Jesus rejected, that failure to recognize it, is, uh, is going to, it, it's going to end evangelical Christianity as we know it. It's going to become something altogether new, and it's going to become something that is pure and undefiled, setting a guard over orphans and widows. So I believe that moving toward that post-evangelical Christianity is going to require that we be thoughtfully, carefully, prayerfully led by the Holy Spirit toward a grander view of God's kingdom, uh, to, to recognize the temptations of the rich and the powerful when they come among us and see that, no, I can't be stained by that temptation to enter that sort of venue. It just doesn't work. James chapter 2, immediately after James 1, 27 says, My brethren, don't hold the faith of our glorious Lord Jesus Christ with an attitude of personal favoritism. For if someone comes in your assembly with a gold ring and dressed in fine clothes, but also a poor man comes in dirty clothes, you pay attention to the one wearing fine clothes, and you say, Set here in a good place. But you say to the poor, Stand over there, set down by my footstool, be my servant. It, you know, without taking that too far, I, I just want you to see again, this is what we've become by by the, the lure of power, the lure of riches, the lure of, of seeing to it that our values are enforced by our politics. That's a surrender to the world. That's a surrender, and that's being stained by our world. That's, that's allowing for something that is far lesser value than the highest law, the highest value, which is love. I have a radio broadcast that you'll see in the comments. It's called The No BS Bishop. I'm alive to love. All lesser values than love are potential BS. When we seek to enforce and legislate our values because love just doesn't work. It's, it, love just takes too much time. Love, love is going to require way too much humility, way too much visiting the orphan and the, the widow. It's going to require me to, to love the wrong people who uh, don't have political power and don't have money to support my systems. Um, we, we opt out of love because of everything I just said, and we, we take to the BS route. <laughs> the BS route, which is to manipulate stuff toward our 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 pleasure, toward our uh, what what seems to make us great. Uh, th that day is over. I, I think that door has slammed in our face, and it's time for a a, a new a new uh, way of demonstrating the beauty of the humble Jesus who heals those who cannot repay him a dime, who is absolutely stone 
hot. <laughs> I almost said stone cold. That isn't true. He's not stone cold, but he's, he's hot as a, a coal of fire for pursuing the one sheep that wandered off from the hundred. This is, this is pure religion and undefiled before God. This is setting a guard. And you know, it's not just a guard upon the orphan and the widow. This is a guard on our heart. Because that orphan and that widow will teach you something about where your heart really is. That person in a vulnerable place will open your heart to you to see who you are. So that you can recognize more of Jesus or not so much. And go after more of what Jesus looks like. Um, we're, you know, it's been said in this uh, particular uh, political season, it's been said we're in, we're in a fight for the soul of our nation. And, and that's probably true, but there's a greater fight as far as I'm concerned. We're, we're in a fight for the soul of Christianity. We're in a fight for the soul of Christianity and the soul of Christianity that is not soiled or stained by our world, but it is soaked, soaked in love. Love that will not stop no matter, no matter who we are loving. I, I've always said that my, my purpose in love is to not love a position or a, 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 a political posture. My, my purpose in love is to love the one person sitting in front of me. Whatever, whatever their lifestyle, to love that one person and to not be led of my own heart in a political posture toward that one person sitting in front of me. Uh, to know that when I minister to somebody, I'm not ministering to policies or their politics. I'm ministering to that one heart who's found something in them that they don't know what to do with, and it seems like the church wants nothing to do with them or to offer them any counsel because of their quote-unquote sinful lifestyle. Please, could we, we deal with could we deal with the plank in our eye before we go after splinters in people's eyes? Look at that one person, LGBTQ. Look at that one person, that person of a different race than me that seems so foreign to my own experience. Listen to them. Hear their vulnerability. Go to them on some guarding heart to guard them, as James says, pure religion undefiled is to guard the orphan and the widow and to find in them the true spirit of Christ in you. Um, I, I'm, I'm utterly convinced that, you know, we're, we're going to reach some points here as the, the election is finalized, and it's not finalized, I understand that, but as it is finalized, our hearts are going to be more and more revealed. I know some of you have seen the prayer of, of some in, in evangelical Christianity who were just desperate in their, 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 their screams, their cries for God to send angels to assist us. When reality, Jesus said in Matthew, he said, hey, don't you think I could call for a legion of angels right now? But that's not what my father wants. Being crucified was where Jesus belonged, not calling for angels to rescue him. You know, I, th I think we need to look, take another look at what we consider power as Christians. Uh, power doesn't look like powerful. Power looks like humble. Power looks like unmitigated, extravagant love. Love that will not quit. Love that goes to goes to the one sheep that wandered from the the hundred and sets a guard on the widow and the orphan well i'm coming close to the end of my time here so i i apologize if if i've gone a little long but this is so near and dear to me the 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 notion of post evangelical christianity has been on my mind for years uh, and and, and I'm, I came to faith in an evangelical setting, so I bear no animosity toward uh, the, 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 the people who loved me into faith and, and into the kingdom. But I recognize they loved me there. They, they didn't enforce laws on me. It wasn't until much later that I recognized that they, they had an idea about what laws I should keep, and they had nothing to do with laws that the police have to enforce. They had everything to do with laws that the church around me was enforcing. I, I, could, I could sit here all night and tell you stories of 
the church laws, I broke unwittingly and paid a dear price for it because uh, I wasn't aware that you, you couldn't go shoot pool. Um, I wasn't aware that I shouldn't listen to certain music that I adored and loved. I wasn't aware that having Janis Joplin as my favorite musician at a time when she was considered uh, anathema, she was considered <laughs> the devil herself, um, or Jimi Hendrix. I just didn't know I was breaking church laws, and I was breaking them left and right with impunity, but I didn't know. My point here is that love is the law. Love is the law. So fulfill the law of Christ is what James tells us. John, 1 John 4 says, if you love, you're, you're dwelling in God. So if, if you want to find God, uh, uh, don't, don't join a, a corporate worship service in the middle of this pandemic uh, it, without a mask and without social distancing. If you want to find God, don't go look for him in a, uh, a non-loving my neighbor gathering. Love your neighbor and you'll find God. He who dwells in love dwells in God. Not he who dwells in, in the best worship set setting in a, in a really technically uh, illegal manner to somehow demonstrate our freedom. No, go, go find the widow and the orphan and go love them. Find love there and you'll find God because First John says if you love, you've, you, you, he who loves is in God and he who is in God is in love. And he who says I, I love God but I don't love my brother is a liar, is a liar. So those that we have in our political stances found to hate uh, they're, they're, they're mirrors for us to look at ourselves and ask, boy, is this l the love of God? A and the answer is no, it's not. If I found hate for any group, any partisan position, hate demonstrates that I don't love God. So he who loves dwells in God, and he who dwells in God dwells in love. Let's, let's go to communion. I'll carry this forward next next week. Post evangelical Christianity is is it's upon us. It's it's not going to be an easy ride. Keep your hands and feet in the ride at all times, um, and just hang on tight. Hang on tight because God is going to have His way in healing the heart of the church and and delivering it from the stains of the world of partisanship and political partnership. By this bread, we are unified. Um, I'm not unified, uh, Brian Zahn said in his service this morning, I'm not unified as an American. I can be, I can be a, a partner in love to fellow citizens in my nation, but the first and highest loyalty I carry is to be one with the body of Christ throughout the world. Uh, we have a potential right now of a, of a president who is a practicing Catholic. And I am, a, I am painfully aware of my Protestant friends, and I am a Protestant, who consider Catholics uh, right up there with the Antichrist, who see the Pope as this vile human being. And we're about to be, uh, if, if Joe Biden is proven to be our next president, which it appears that's what's happening, he will be a practicing Catholic, and that's only the second time in American history. It's going to, again, call for all of us to be an answer to the prayer of Jesus. Father, make them one as you and I are one. That we as Protestants or Catholic would come to the table of the Lord, to the Eucharist, the Eucharisteo, the giving of thanks at the bread, at this, at this sacrament that Jesus said, this is my body. May we come, O oh God, to be unified as the people of God and unified under one banner. His banner over me is love, not law, love. We eat this bread in humble love for our one and only King, Jesus Christ. And by this blood... We are reminded that we are of one blood, that we are all one blood, 
<laughs> Martin Luther King Jr. said, Either we will learn to live together as brothers and sisters' family, or we will perish as fools. May we, O oh God, come to live, live together as one blood, the blood of the Lamb, on the doorpost of our lives that, that the death angel would pass over and that we, the people of God, would be delivered from our partisanship, our brokenness, and be united in one blood, the blood of the Lamb, Protestant and Catholic, to show the world a love that's been rarely seen, and to love our neighbor as ourselves, and yes, to love our enemy. By the blood of the Lamb, teach us to be one. Thank you, Jesus, for this cup. Well, I'm so honored that you came to be with us today. I just checked my time, and it's time to wrap this up. Please watch in the comments. This is a different uh, presentation of uh, of Sunday Night Sanctuary. We've had trouble with, with Facebook Live, so we're doing this um, by YouTube channel, my, my YouTube channel. And we're going to see how that works and see if we can keep this moving along a little better. Make, maybe it'll get some legs that it hasn't had. Um, no BS Bishop, I'm alive to love, all lesser values or potential BS. That's on WPCA Radio. You'll see the, the address for that in the comments. Ginger will come in there and make sure that you can see how you can help support us. We, we believe that we're, a, we're missionaries to America. We need financial support to get that done. There's so many technical items that need to be tended to that I, I'm limited in my own skills and we, we need to be able to bring somebody into our, our, uh, our circle of, of life and help us out with the technical uh, a aspects of that so that No BS Bishop becomes a podcast as well as a radio broadcast. But you can go and listen to that radio broadcast off their website. My, my uh, email is in there. If you have any questions, shoot them my way. I'm, I'm all ears. Thank you for being here today. I am honored that you would choose to give me a half an hour of your time. I do believe that the next revolution of Christianity is, is a revolution of love that is raw, it's real, it will not quit. It is, it is ragged, uh, and it's determined to rise above the partisanship and the poison and vitriol that we've dipped into. It's, it's a love that looks like Jesus, who recognizes that he can serve only one master. No one can serve two masters. You love the one or you, and, and you hate the other. And in this case, our, our king is Jesus. And him alone will we, to him alone will we bow. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I love you all. Um, I want you to go out there and do something beautiful today. Our, our world is looking for people of beauty. Go do something beautiful. Because ugly has been done to death. I love you all. Peace. Come back again next Sunday night. 6 p.m. Central Standard Time.